Hi, welcome to the video. This is the first video of the three part series of uh, initializing real time processing. We will be talking about the way to ingest the changes in data happening in the RDS in real time in Kafka. Real time analytics is very important when it comes to getting a direction of your key performance indicators or KPIs, or you want to prevent frauds. Maybe you would like to raise alerts based on some condition. So faster analytics leads to faster action and ingestion is the first step, or you can say the foundation towards getting a real time analytics platform. We will analyze and study Maxwell, which is an open source application to read the bin logs of MySQL and push it to different targets. In our case, it will be Kafka. The first part will cover what are the needs of a real time ETL. In the second part, we will dive into the architecture of Maxwell. And in the third part, we will understand what are the configurations and how to set up and demonstrate a live action with Maxwell. Let's get us started with the first section, which is need for Maxwell. Let's talk about some of the data ingestion strategies. Let's say we have a table in MySQL, which contains employee location, ID and name where ID is the primary key. And we have to ingest it into our data lake solutions because for larger volume of data, you would not like to query the RDS directly for your analytics. It's better to use solutions around Hive, Presto, Spark, SQL and others, which are more open source and uh, uh, which are open source and more scalable when it comes to analysis. So we have to bring it that the data into some kind of a storage, which could be HDFS or it could be S3. And afterwards, if there is a new data coming in RDS, you can do an incremental pull. Let's say ID up to three has been copied and new data comes in, which has ID higher than three. You can select a specific portion of your database by applying a where clause on the ID and you can avoid a full table scan. Scoop is a popular choice for such use cases and it can parallelize your ingestion. You can run multiple uh, processes like multiple mappers in parallel so that every mapper pulls as some section, some subset of the data and overall the whole action can be fast. It can, uh, if you try to use a scoop, uh, it will be very generic to support varieties of databases and there is no need to scan the source table fully, but there are certain assumptions. The first assumption is the data has not to change. The data which you have already imported should not change and uh, there should be some kind of column which always increments. It could be say a timestamp column or some kind of auto increment column. In our case, it was ID, but the question is what if data changes? Well, there are solutions around that as well. If you try to use a scoop and if your data changes, like if your new data has arrived, as you can see, ID one and two has updates on the location and ID four has been recently added. Uh, well, what you can do is in every action, do a full load of the table. So bring entire data periodically that period can be a day the period can be a week or say a few hours but bring the entire data and overwrite the data in your s3 and again you can do that with something like scoop and final storage will contain the updated data data can be brought as long as it is in the source but the direct demerit is you are doing a full table scan every day and as and when data keeps on growing your volume of the source table also increases and your performance can degrade 
And when you try to launch multiple connections to the same RDS, there could be a threshold above which you are not allowed or you can hamper the actual performance of the RDS. So there are some demerits if the data volume increases uh, a lot. So what we can do is you can, you can mix and match. You can do an incremental load and in your data lake, you can have two storage, one for historical and one for the snapshot so that you get incremental import. But in your data lake, you do some kind of merge or join to identify which records have been updated or deleted and inserted and so on. So that's the third strategy where you would like to maintain the history of the information. In this approach, um, if you have uh, RDS data, RDS database, you bring the entire data in the first shot, keep, keep it in some kind of a stage, which is can be in your uh, S3 and maintain one snapshot. This uh, stage is going to contain entire data or maybe some kind of temporary data up to your choice. Let's say we keep temporary data in the stage and a snapshot contains the entire data. Uh, it is very close to the source. Well, that depends on how frequently you run it. Say if you run once a day, your snapshot can be lagging behind the RDS by up to one day. And if you run every hour, your snapshot will be close to the RDS uh, up to a latency of one hour. So snapshot contains only the recent data, which is there in the RDS and uh, the stage and the snapshot, they have to be merged or joined on the basis of the primary key to identify which records have been updated in the snapshot and or which records have been deleted from the RDS and which records are the new inserts. If there is new data coming in the RDS, we do an incremental pull, keep it in the stage. So a stage is your temporary landing area. And then you again perform this kind of merge or join based on the primary keys to repopulate the snapshot. The idea behind this is uh, your load over the RDS is reduced. You don't have a, a full table scan every time, but the question is, is this uh, really uh, real time? Well, this question arises uh, because your real time depends on how frequently are you running it. Say you are uh, importing every hour and uh, let's say at 10, uh, in the morning, the value corresponding to ID one was say A, okay? And at 11, the value corresponding to ID one was E. All you can see is when you will run your processing or ingestion pipeline at 10, you will be able to, you will be able to see the value of one as A. And when you run at 11, you will be able to see the value of one as E but you are not sure if one changed between 10 and 11 maybe at 10 15 the value of a was updated to f and maybe at 10 30 the value of one um, was updated to g so the updates happening in the middle of two subsequent or two successive injection are lost so it's uh, the, the first problem is, is it is not 100% real time because you have specified your interval. The interval can be closer or it can be higher, but uh, it's not guaranteed to be real time because in practice, records can change, say, multiple times within one second as well. It depends on, it depends on the use cases. So first of all, it's, the question is, is this really real time? And the next question, which we discussed right away was, uh, are we capturing all updates? Well, there is no guarantee we are getting all updates. And what about the load we are adding on the source? If we try to run this aggressively, say every 30 minutes or every 15 minutes, we do incremental pull. We are adding load on our source RDS. Our source RDS is under constant stress because of the injection processes. So this brings us to this uh, structure where we have one RDS, let's say it's MySQL. A general data pipeline looks like bringing data to some kind of raw area, raw tables, 
which contains everything. Usually it is unfiltered, untransformed, and uh, it's very diverse. We try to create a semantic layer on top of it, which contains uh, aggregates based on business logic. And it also contains uh, filtered and transformed data. Maybe you would like to maintain some kind of uniformity of the time zone or uniformity of the file format. This is the layer which can ensure this kind of uh, behavior. And afterwards, uh, Based on your requirements, you can have different cubes and models uh, based on the KPIs. They, and on top of these models, you generate your reports. These can also be termed as a silver, gold, and diamond layers or stages. And the moment your data comes to the raw, this is where data lake boundary starts. Usually your raw semantic and models are, are, are in HDFS or S3. What we have discovered so far is if we want to go real time, this is the region which is the deal maker or deal breaker. The latency of this ingestion over here and the completeness of the information which you receive by completeness, we mean are you losing any update or any data? This kind of uh, this kind of structure or this kind of behavior will decide how much real time your final reporting will be. This brings us to the final segment of uh, this part, which is what are the expectations from an ingestion system? Your ingestion systems should respond quickly, ideally within milliseconds. If there is any change happening in the source, you should be able to capture it as quickly as possible. You should be able to replay the events. If you want to go back in time and you want to reprocess all the data of your RDS, which have come up since yesterday or since last two, three days, you should be able to replay those events. Maybe your uh, ingestion logic has changed. Maybe your business logic has, has changed and you need to reprocess your source data. So replayability of events or reprocessing requirements are important. Reliability is the next point where say you ingest from the relational data source or uh, any RDBMS and you push it to some kind of system. When the system uh, acknowledges it, you are sure that that's going to be durable. Your changes into the final system are preserved. If your data increases in the source or there is a sudden spike, your solution should be scalable enough to take advantage of distributed processing or kind of some kind of decomposition should be there so that you can launch multiple ingestion systems uh, to meet the growth in the data. The ingestion system should integrate well with the target storage. Kafka is one of them, but your storage could be on cloud, say uh, Kinesis or Google PubSub. So your uh, solution should have a better integration. You may switch from one RDBMS uh, MySQL server to the other MySQL server. So switching from one to the other should be as painless as possible. In your data lake, when you implement a schema, which is important to control uh, that only valid data is present in your data lake, when that schema is enforced, your ingestion system should also respond to the changes in the schema in the actual source. At best, it should capture them as well. And finally, if you want to add customizations or extend features to it or add more configurations, it should be extensible enough to support your use cases. So there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of expectations uh, from an ingestion system, and in the next part we will talk about uh, Maxwell, and we will see the requirements of setting up Maxwell. Thanks for watching the video.